One of the studies the crew has been working on over the past few weeks takes a look at the microbes that live inside and outside our bodies, commonly referred to as microbiome. A lengthy study on the space station continues to gather data on the types of organisms that are associated directly with what's on the crew member's skin and in their GI tracts and how that may affect their immune systems and what they're learning could have an impact on long-duration missions as well on Earth. Lori Meggs is at the Payload Operations and Integration Center at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center with more. Lori? Well, what researchers are really looking for in the microbiome experiment are the changes that occur in those microorganisms that grow in and on crew members and how it may affect their health and whether or not spaceflight makes them more susceptible to disease. I spoke with Alexander Voorhees. He's a genetics researcher at the J. Craig Venter Institute that's known for pioneering genomics research to learn more. A lot of research has been done lately looking at the human microbiome and all the microbes that are associated with the human body and how when they're in a good positive state, they can really help human health. They can bolster our immune system and they can help us digest food in a way that gives us just the amount that we need and not excess. On the other hand, when it's perturbed and when it's disturbed, like when you take antibiotics, suddenly you don't have any of those organisms helping you out. And so those are usually associated with disease states. And when a diverse community of microbes is usually associated with being a healthy community. And when you lose microbes due to whatever sort of disease state, what ends up happening is you lose diversity. And so what we're really looking, interested in looking at is these astronauts that are up in orbit they're in a stressed state, their immune system is compromised, and it's likely that there's changes in the diversity of their microbial communities. And that may have direct impacts on their health. So how do you study that? So in order to do that, we start by using a marker gene called the 16S ribosomal RNA. It's a small subunit of the ribosome. The ribosome is the protein that's responsible for making proteins in the human body. Every organism on the planet has one. And so we can make a tree of life that shows the phylogenetic relationships of organisms. So we can study this gene in very, very complex detail over a large quantities of, quantity of samples. And what we expect is that being under stressful conditions that compromise the astronaut's immune system will change the microbial communities, both in their guts and on their skin while they're in orbit. And that once they return, we'll see a shift back towards the resting state of the community that we observed before they left. And what we observe with people on the planet is that when they undergo periods of stress or periods of disease, the communities associated with them shifts. Either they get more organisms or the, or the number of organisms contracts and they have less. And so what we want to know is this is a high stress situation when we send somebody, they leave the planet and they go up into orbit. What happens to those microbial communities with these people who are highly trained? They're trained to deal with stress and they're in great physical shape. And what sorts of changes will we notice in them, and how can we apply that both to people going on longer missions to Mars, where it's going to become very important to monitor a microbial community over that time, and also, what can we do to help bolster their immune system? Can we have them eat certain foods? Can we give them microbes in order to bolster their immune system and keep them in better health throughout the mission so that they can focus on doing the things that an astronaut needs to do and not the fact that they feel sick? So the unique thing about this experiment, number one, is that it's really a lengthy investigation. It really is. It's a five-year project in total. Six of our crew members have already completed sampling. Four more are in the process of sampling. And what is more than just the fact that it's a long time period, uh, we sample at 10 different time points, both pre-flight, in-flight, and post-flight. We also sample at a number of different body sites. So we'll be looking at six different body sites and then also correlating that to levels of stress and to uh, immune function as measured by cortisol in the blood, or I'm sorry, cortisol in saliva or cytokines in the blood. So what kind of samples are we talking about that we take from the crew? So the first sample that we have them take is just an air swab. They, they take the swab and they wipe back and forth in the air and it's really a negative control to make sure that we're not contaminating it with organisms from Earth along the way through our sampling process and sequencing process. We then take a look at the forearms, the forehead, uh, the nasal cavity, the tongue, and stool samples to get an idea of what's going on in the GI tract. Over this time, you said you've had six complete 
this already. What have you learned so far? So far, what we're finding, uh, and we only have preliminary results so far, uh, we're expecting to have more soon, but what we're finding so far is that we are noticing a shift, a measurable shift, in the microbial communities while they're in orbit. And it will become very powerful when we can average the results of multiple crew members to really pick out, is this chemistry specific to an individual crew member, or is this a trend that all people experience when they go up into space? So why should I care here on Earth? Well, because being healthy in space is very similar to being healthy on Earth. The things that we discover will directly relate to every human. And it may relate to being in a stressful situation, or it may inform our knowledge about what happens to the average human in their microbiome just while they're going through their daily lives.